Hello everyone and welcome to this fifth episode of the Dark Table from A to Z series. Today's topic will be dark room panels. Let's go ahead and open dark room by double clicking on a photo. Just underneath the photo in this line you can see some valuable information about it. The sh shutter speed the f-stop, the focal length and the ISO value. Uh, this can be set up in the configuration as well to show more or less uh, information. In the top left corner you've got a thumbnail that shows you the current zoom level and we're now in fit to screen so you actually see that there is no difference but let's zoom ahead. Remember it's by using the mouse wheel and control button and as you can see we can see now the viewable part of the image in the thumbnail we can select another part to view by clicking on it in the, the mouse button left mouse button or we can click on the rectangle and drag it to pan the image The value here is the zoom level and if you click on it you've got quick access to predefined zoom levels 50% 100% and even more if you want to go pixel peeping if you can select one by simply clicking on it just like any scroll menu let's go back to fit the screen The first menu is called Snapshots and to no one's surprise it allows you to take snapshots of the image. You can take multiple snapshots of the same image and they're stored for as long as you are in darkroom. They disappear when you, uh, when you close it. So what is the use? Well you can combine it with the history to um, compare two versions of the image. For instance, suppose I want to see the effect of the haze removal. I can click on local contrast and see the effect, but if I wanted to really compare them, I can click on local contrast, take a snapshot, you can see it's local contrast. If I select that snapshot and select haze removal here, on the right hand I would have the version with haze removal, on the left it will be, it will be the version without you have a line here in the middle that you can click on and scroll to see what is the effect of haze removal and if you hover over this little arrow here you can change the direction of the split you can delete all snapshots by clicking on the reset button, the parameters button. We've discussed the history stack before, but here's a short recap. It records the history of all the uh, activation and deactivations of modules that you've selected, or that you've done. If you select a uh, module, it goes back to that level and if you press compress history stack it will delete everything above that uh, um, selection if you actually select something and do other modifications it will as well replace everything above that one I'll show you by selecting another module then uh, local contrast um, no, I've got haste removal so I will press the lens correction one and as you can see lens correction module replaced everything that was above local contrast where I was well though that I selected the compressed history stack as well will delete all redundant modules so it will produce the shortest stack to give you the same result and this little button here 
allows you to create a style from your current history stack. Click on it, you get a selection of which modules you want to include. You can choose a name, of course, and a description that you can search upon later on. Uh, you can use that style in Lightroom like we've discussed before to apply the same modifications or processing to other images. Next we have the duplicate manager. Again we've discussed that in light table. Uh, here you can see all the duplicates that you have of the same photo that you may have created. The difference between duplicates and snapshots is that snapshots are just uh, bitmap uh, saves of that of the image that are only saved for the current session, while duplicates creates a different sidecar for every duplicate on the same image, and those will just be saved until you delete them. So if you if you wanted to have multiple uh, versions of processing versions of the same image, you'd create a duplicate. Snapshots are mainly just for comparisons in the same session. You can create duplicates by uh, pressing on the, uh, the plus button here. And here you can create a uh, duplicate with exactly the same history stack as this one. Let's create a duplicate to see how it works. So I'm going to create a virgin duplicate, which means that's a duplicate with the default history stack. See, the new version is automatically selected. I can double click on one to work on it. If you click on it, you can see it in the center. But if you release the mouse button, it goes back to the selected one. You can click on this X button here to delete a duplicate. Next, we have the color picker, which allows you to pick a color from an image uh, and display it in multiple ways. Uh, the settings that you select will be saved only for this session. So when you leave Darkroom, it always returns to its or default values. It is activated by pressing this pipette button here. Note that some modules have their own color pickers as well and the difference between the two the global color picker and the local color picker in modules is that this one takes a sample after the whole pixel pipe have been processed while the local ones uh, take um, samples from the their um, proper co um, color space that means that uh, if there were other uh, modules after the module that you're using to select the color from those will not be taken into consideration in the color that you are picking the color picker can be used in two modes point let's click on it and show it oh, it's the default is area here but if I click on point you see that it's actually selecting a single point in the image you can as well zoom on the image to select specifically which point you want and area which allows you to select a rectangle you select it by clicking somewhere and then dragging with the mouse the same drop box can be used to select the mode for local color pickers as well just to make things more confusing zoom back out in the area selection mode you've got uh, three ways of select uh, selection which is the mean which is just the average statistical mean or the minimum value or the maximum value and you can select them through this drop box here of course those would make no sense in a single point, so you can't do that. This area here shows you a swatch of the selected color. You can see. And here you've got the values which are calculated in RGB from the, your monitor values. Keep that in mind 
we can discuss that when we're uh, working into the color picker of uh, modules you can select to go into LAB or lab values but these are approximation that are calculated from the RGB values if you select the checkbox restrict histogram to selection you can see the histogram on the top right corner only then shows the values for the current selection this is useful if you wanted to work on the tonal values of just the selection in question you can uh, add live samples by pressing this add button here live samples are a swatch and the current values of the current selection they're called live values because they, this these values will change as you process the image and add more modules to it if you don't want that then you can click on this watch with the left mouse button and this one would be locked this way this one will not change if I add another one I will have the possibility of um, comparing the two values if I add something suppose a hey, it's removal as you can see the live one the values of the live one changed because of the effect of haze module while the blocked one is still the previous one and I can select the display sample image uh, areas on image to superimpose those on the image and compare the effects of the modules that have added you can delete the live samples by pressing on the X button. Next we have tagging which allows you to uh, add tags to the current image. Uh, it's the same as, uh, it works the same as uh, tagging in light table you can create new uh, tags and attach them to this image or you can import and export the list of tags that you have for more information you can refer to the light table uh, video next we have the image information which just shows you the image information <laughs> uh, which is a combination of the uh, information added to it by darkroom and the exit file let's go ahead and get rid of that selection rectangle you can do that by pressing that button again in the color picker picker panel Next we have the mask manager which allows you to manage all the masks that you created in the modules on this image. We've discussed masks in the previous video so you can refer to that. Let's create a mask to see how it works. I'll select the haze removal module, press on drone masks and select the circle shape and just click it somewhere. As you can see, you can directly see here that in the group haze removal you've got a circle and it's automatically given a uh, serial number. The little on icon here shows that this particular shape is used in a module. You can create mod uh, shapes directly from the mask manager using these buttons here who work exactly the same as the ones in the drone mask under modules for more information please refer to the previous video but let's go ahead and add a path just to show how it works remember you right click to finish the path as you can see we created a path but it's not actually currently used in anything you can use shapes that you've created in the mask manager in modules by if you go to drone module you can under the mask the drone mask 
you can see the existing shapes and here's the path that we've added if we click on that I'll be able to use it directly under the sharpen module I'll reset that clicking on the little arrow next to a group will expand that group and show you a list of all of the shapes that are used in that group this particular one it's on this circle number one the automatic naming is just the name of the shape plus a uh, incremental number next to it so if I create another path it will be path number two and so on and so forth of course that can become rather confusing quickly if you have about five paths with just path and number next to them it will be difficult to uh, differentiate between them if you click on a shape then it's displayed on the image so you can see what it is but better as well you can double click on it to rename it and give it a more meaningful name so I can call this one side of the mountain and so I can quickly uh, recognize it from the name if I want to use it in modules you can right click on a shape to get a men menu you can duplicate the shape you can delete the shape and you can clean up all unused shapes this might be useful if you've been adding lots and lots of shapes to an image but not using them uh, this all the uh, shapes are saved with the image this is usually not a problem except for certain file types just like JPEG if you have hundreds and or thousands of shapes uh, you might not be able to save them all in the um, exported image due to limitations so you can clean up unused images or you can delete a particular shape I'm going to go ahead and delete them all Notice that you can delete a shape that's in use as well, so be careful. Let's create multiple shapes under haze removal to show how you can combine them. So I'm going to do a circle, big circle. It's directly here, and I'm going to add a small path. Let's click the display mask button here to show it. And I'll click on the triangle to show the list. And if you see, can see the uh, the list is displayed in the order that they were added, you can click on one to show it and this little icon next to the second one is the operation used to combine those two and the default one is called union union I'll move this one just a little bit to show you what it is union just adds all the selected images from both masks selected it just means that it has a value of selection more than zero so even the ones that are blurred at the end are selected we can right click on it to change that mode oh, we can remove it from the group or use an inverted shape as well so uh, inverted shape is the same as inverting it in the module it just selects everything except that shape the second one is called intersection an intersection is just selects only the pixels that are on the intersection between the two modules the third one is called difference which selects everything that's from the first module except what was selected by the second module so it's the difference between the sorry not module mask it's the difference between the first mask and the second mask the last one is called exclusion and exclusion is 
selects everything from both masks except their intersection. Go back to Union. Last but not least, you can uh, move up or down or clean up and use shapes. Um, you can move uh, a mask up and down in the list because as you can see uh, the um, order makes a difference on how you see, how you use them so uh, um, let's go back to difference difference is the difference between this mask and the previous one as we've just said but now if I move this one up and then select difference here oh. I have to change one to union if I select it like that then the difference between was always between the second one and the first one and you select a completely different shape top right corner as we've already mentioned is the histogram if you hover over it you get multiple options you can switch to waveform or linear default is logarithmic and then you can select specific channels to display the histogram is directly related to the exposure module and we will discuss it even more when we discuss the exposure module in detail at the bottom you can see the film roll which is all the current selected images you can see the one that you're currently working on in dark dark room is selected here you can use f1 to f5 to change the color coding as you can see you can see them here in the small thumbnail press it again to remove it you can use the one to five button on your keyboard to change the star rating and you can use uh, control C control V to copy and uh, paste the history stack from one to the other like we discussed in light table this is it for this time I hope that you found it uh, useful and enjoyable you can leave any uh, corrections or suggestions in the comments below and until next time, bye-bye.